That was, that was nice for FAMU game or FSU game, but David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet will stand within thy gates, O oh, Jerusalem. So if we have Jerusalem here. Can we lift up a shout of praise to our God? Hallelujah. 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 They told me this was the 13th anniversary. So we, we come to celebrate, amen? Amen. Do me a favor and look to the person next to you. My sister alluded to this in Sunday school, Luke 14. It's more important to care for the person than it is for what's going on, amen? So would you look to your neighbor and say, excuse me, but I come to praise the Lord. So if you have a problem with praise, you might need to move your seat right now. If you have a problem with worship, then this is the wrong place for you to be in. If you have a problem with me lifting my hands, then you might as well go out the front door because I came to lift up my Savior. I came to lift up Jesus. Oh, that men would worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a little better now. Would you stand with me for the reading of our word today? We'll be coming from the 121st division of Psalms, Psalms 121. Something in the atmosphere. This feels like home. This is my first time here. This feels like home. Hallelujah. Psalms 121, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. This is a song of ascent, God to help those who seek him. Amen. This is the reading of God's word. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither sleep, slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. Somebody say he's my keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Has anybody been preserved by the Holy Spirit? He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Let's go before the throne of grace. Father, it's truly right to give you praise, to give you adoration. For you created us to have fellowship with you, to worship you, and to be your representatives on this earth. So before we ask anything, Lord, we acknowledge who you are. We acknowledge your uniqueness. We acknowledge your holiness. We acknowledge your righteousness. We acknowledge that you are a blessed trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God, we acknowledge your strength. We acknowledge your faithfulness, your grace, and your mercies that you give to us each and every day. Before we ask anything, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us how you've kept us through every storm, every trial, every tribulation, the good days and the bad days, our ups and our downs, the mountains and the valleys. You hit us and you kept us. So we say thank you. Thank you for providing for our needs. Thank you for loving us when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you for forgiving us when we went astray. Thank you, God, for being who you are. For you are our hope, our peace, and our future. So we acknowledge you today, oh God. And we invite you in. Do what only you can do. Heal those who are sick. Lift up the brokenhearted. Lift up the hung down head. Touch those who are afflicted. Strengthen those who are weak. God, we need you today. We read the Psalms today and it says our help comes from you. So we lift up our eyes unto the hills from which cometh our help. 
because we know that you are our help. So God, in the name of Jesus, visit old Jerusalem today. Visit old Jerusalem this morning. Make this place your habitation. Make this place the place where you come. Move up and down the aisles. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Because it is you. It is you. It is you who we come to lift up. It is you who we come to serve. It is your name and your name alone. So we thank you for 13 years. We thank you for the man of this house. We thank you for this local fellowship. We thank you that down through the years, the Lord has been good to old Jerusalem. We thank you, God, that some people have gone, some people have gone, but they still remain. They are still here through every trial, through every test. You kept old Jerusalem. So as a body of believers, we give you praise for keeping your bride. We give you praise for keeping the man of God. We give you praise for keeping these your people. We give you praise because you are faithful to old Jerusalem. You are faithful to this church set in this city of Havana. And we ask God that you will bless these now your people. Bless them, God. Pour out a blessing that they have not room enough to receive because there's still work to be done in this city. There's still work to be done in this house. So as we come to you, we acknowledge the 13 years. We acknowledge what you're doing. But most of all, we acknowledge that you are still God and you are still on the throne. And we give you praise for this. We give you glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Father God, we worship you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord yes, this Lord, morning? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Yes, God. We thank you, O oh Lord. You're worthy of the honor and the glory and yes, the praise. Yes, Lord, yes, can we Lord. have a good time this morning? Can we celebrate the Lord this morning? Come on, if you can stand to your feet all over the place, let's stand to your feet and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, 
neighbor. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. Sister can't do it. Honey can't do it. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. I'm a living witness. He'll turn you around. Jesus. Place your feet on a solid ground. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. If God woke you up this morning, stand to your feet and give us some praise. you this morning and to give you your dedication. So good morning. Welcome to the Pastor and First Family 13th Celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Anytime the doors of the old Jerusalem missionary, missionary, <laughs> missionary Baptist Church doors are open, you are welcome. We are thrilled that you counted not robbery to come out and partake in this celebration and to sup spiritually with us this morning. We are here to celebrate Pastor Rogers for accepting his assignment as the spiritual overseer here at Old Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. As we are chosen to show Jesus to the world, Pastor Rogers studied to show himself approved to shepherd this flock. Pastor Rogers, we celebrate you for teaching and preaching the word of God and being an example to those you have been charged to lead. We also honor your family for the numerous sacrifices they have made for you to lead this congregation. The number 13 may be unlucky, but the celebration here today shows that hard work and perseverance can change 13 into a lucky number. A praise party is going on at Old Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. Hallelujah. As we celebrate Pastor Rogers and family for 13 years of service, we welcome you here once in the name of the Father, twice in the name of the Son, and thrice in the Holy Spirit. Let us praise God as we worship in fellowship in Jesus' name. Pastor Rogers and First Family, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So let go and let God. However, we have a disclaimer on the service this morning. We will not be responsible for any lost tips, any broken heels, <laughs> lost weaves, lost dentures. Here at Old Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. Drunken in the spirit this morning, hallelujah. We have ushers here to help you during the recovery process. So let go and let God and let us celebrate Pastor Rogers and family for 13 years of service. Amen. 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 Certainly we thank God today for who he is. We magnify him. We lift him up. We praise him because we realize that there is none like him. Amen. Amen. And uh, I, just, I just need about 50 of y'all that if you know God has done something that only God could do. moment uh, to introduce the man of the hour uh, who's going to break the bread of life. It is a good thing uh, to be able to say you have a good friend. Uh, but it's another thing 
when you can have four brothers that hold you accountable, they pray for you, they let you be yourself. And for those who are at uh, Bible Base last month, you heard Pastor McGee talk about Ash, Harris, Hudson, and Rogers. Uh, but the politician, the governor, the senator, the house rep, the mayor, the councilman, the city manager, hey man, the historian, the, <laughs> the judge, the jury, all wrapped up in one. Uh, that would be Pastor McGee of the group. Don't let all this seriousness that he got going on right now fool y'all. <laughs> hey, man, if y'all ever get some of them random texts that he's seeing, y'all know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Amen. But certainly we are honored to have Pastor Derek McGee here with us this morning. Hey, Amen. We thank God for uh, the Bible-based church. Hey, Amen. He is... One of God's best. Certainly, you know him to be an extraordinary preacher and pastor. Uh, but I think him to be even a greater husband. Uh, to be that of Lady Takia. Amen. 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 We honor her. We thank God for her. Amen. And then uh, he is a phenomenal father. Uh, to my niece and my nephew, amen. I can't call him Lil D no more, amen. So we call him Derek, amen, because he's much bigger than his daddy now, <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. He's a beast on that football field, amen. Uh, nephew, I love you until October the 13th, <laughs> amen, when they play Godby High School, amen. Amen. And to my niece, amen. To Nia, where she at? Where she at? There she is, amen. Amen. So we thank God for them. Amen. But certainly uh, the music ministry is going to come back uh, and bless us with the selection. And then the next voice you will hear, will that be of uh, Pastor Derek McGee Sr. Amen. Let us put our blessed hands together. Amen. As we prepare to hear the music ministry as they come. Amen. Come on, let's continue to worship the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Oh God, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You're so worthy. Bless you, O God.
How then should they call upon him and do not believe? How then should they believe upon him whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he first be sent? For as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things into the house of the Lord our God. Father, thank you for doing all things well. Father, thank you for allowing us to gather together jointly in your presence. Father, thank you for this worship experience. Father, thank you for trusting me as a herald of your message. I stand now to rightly divide the word of truth, to say what thus saith the Lord. And I pray, O oh God, that as your word is lifted, most importantly, your name be lifted. And as your name be lifted, your people be lifted. And as we are lifted, oh God, let our praise be lifted unto you. Father, we give you the praise now, the honor and the glory. Now, Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, let them, Lord God, acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength, 
You're our redeemer. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And amen. 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 Come on, give our God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, first and foremost, let me establish that everybody is not six foot whatever. This thing is too high. I feel like <laughs> what is going on, man? <laughs> man? You gotta have a little thing on the side, Glory to God. Now that I established that, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all this morning. If you will, rest on your feet for the reading of the Word of God this morning. I am beyond excited and grateful and appreciative to my dear brother and fan, friend, Pastor Rogers, for the blessing of doing this. We've never done this before, where we've jointly combined church services on Sunday morning. So I want to say good morning to OJ and to BBC and give God glory. Happy to be a part of celebration, man. Down through the years been through a lot together in ministry from associate serving to where God has us now man and I'm grateful to be here the God the Lord gave me a word second Samuel chapter number six in the new living translation second Samuel chapter number six um, I was trying to grab a few verses and give them to you but truthfully to keep the text in proper context I need to read the text and so second Samuel chapter number six if you will just brace with me as I read these words to you Second Samuel chapter number six. Only time I will ask you to stand. If you stand beyond this, it's by your choosing. Second Samuel chapter number six, verse number one says, Then David again gathered all the elite troops in Israel, 30,000 in all, and he led them to Bala of Judah to bring back the ark of God, which bears the name of the Lord of heaven's army, who, enth who is enthroned beyond the cherubim. They placed the ark of God on a new cart and brought it from Abinadab's house, which was on a hill. Uzzah and Ahihua, Abinadab's sons, were guiding the cart that carried the ark of God. Ahio walked in the front of the ark. David and all the people of Israel were celebrating before the Lord, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. But when they arrived at the threshing floor of Nakan, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out his hand and steadied the ark of God. And the Lord's anger was aroused against us, and God struck him dead because of this. So Uzzah died right there beside the ark of God. David was angry because of the Lord's anger had burst out against Uzzah. He named that place Perez Uzzah, which means to burst out against Uzzah, as it is called today. David was now afraid of the Lord, and he asked, how can I ever bring the ark of the Lord back into my care? So David decided not to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom of Gath. The ark of the Lord remained there in Obed-Edom's house for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his entire household. Then King David was told, the Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's household and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went there and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with a great celebration. After the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fatted calf. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, my cow, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing for the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place as inside the special tent David prepared for it. David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's army. Then he gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, a cake of raisins, and all the people returned to their homes. When David returned home to bless his own family, Michal, the son of David, came out to meet him. She said in disgust how, dig how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servants' girls like a vulgar person might do. David retorted to Michal, I was dancing for the Lord who chose me above your father and his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord, so I celebrate before the Lord. Yes, I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to humiliate myself in, in my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think I am distinguished. So Michal, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout 
her entire life. 21 again, David retorted, my cow, I was dancing for the Lord who chose me above your father and all his family. For a short time, I want to preach from this topic, when the preacher praises. You may have your seats in the Lord's presence. When the preacher praises. When the preacher praises. Brothers and sisters, in order for you to have a good understanding of the text, we must understand who David is. David is not someone who has always been a king, nor did he come from a time where his family is from royalty. David is the youngest of Jesse's sons, and based on monarchical privileges, David should not be the king of Israel. David, being the youngest, should not even be considered to be in the, in the line to even be considered as king. David is the eighth of Jesse's sons. And when Samuel came to anoint a king in Jesse's house, Jesse brought seven of his sons, and David was not one of them. David was outside tending to the sheep while his father, his seven siblings, and Samuel were inside sacrificial service. The Lord told Samuel to have the men come before, and Samuel became impressed by what he saw because Eliab, the oldest brother, looked like he could be a king. He had the statue and the prominence, but here in lies the promise. Samuel almost made the mistake that the people had made before when they created, created Saul as their king. He looked like a king, had the statue like a king. But just because you look like something does not mean that God called you for that posture and that position. You must be careful, people of God, not to allow your eyes to deceive you into thinking that what you see is what God wants you to have. The Lord says to Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, Look at, look at the man's heart. For God did not look at the man's appearance, but at the man's heart. Ladies and gentlemen, there were some of you in here this morning that people can't see your heart. They will see your attire. And they will judge your attire not knowing your heart. But God sees beyond what you are wearing and knows how he can use you for his glory. 1 Samuel 17, David is back now tending to his father's sheep. His brothers have gone on to battle to begin to fight with Saul and the men of Israel. And the Lord, the, the, Samuel, Jesse sends David to go attend to his brothers and figure out what's going on. And he goes there. And when he gets there, he realized the people are fearful because, because Goliath and the, and the Philistines are threatening to kill the Israelites. For 40 days, the champion Goliath has been taunting them. And based on comparison, it's Saul's job to go fight Goliath, but Saul is too afraid. David, being a teenager at this point, David is asking, what is the reward for the one who kills this uncircumcised Philistine? He is told that, and David prepares to go to battle when Saul unrobes himself and puts his garment on David. David said, I can't fight in your garment. Isn't it amazing how God had chosen David in chapter 16 to replace Saul, Saul on the throne, and Saul voluntarily gives his garment to his replacement, not knowing about it. David begins to go to battle, and David sees Goliath, and he says, you want to talk about citizen today, God's going to give me your head on the platter. David takes a slingshot and five smooth stones because they realize I can't fight in your battle, but what I have is tested, is tried, and is true. Your praise it doesn't look like my praise, but when you know that your praise works, don't mimic somebody else's praise. Use what you know that works in your own life. God chooses David to be the next king while Saul is occupying the throne. Because just like God, God is going to eventually get his will to precede your will. For 13 years, the Lord allowed a man to be standing here as the pastor of this church. He's been serving here faithfully beyond 13 years. And God allowed the time to be orchestrated where now it was his set time. He before the people. He served under Pastor Black. He served under Pastor Green. He served under Pastor Wilkerson. He served as the interim. And while he served in those capacities, God said, I'm testing your faithfulness. It can be hard to serve people and wait your turn. But when God says it's your turn, when the people don't care about it, it's still your turn. David, David should not be where David is, but David is in this place because God has seen in David the qualifications to use David. It wasn't David's physical appearance, wasn't his father's namesake, wasn't his resume, wasn't his income. But that God knew, I can trust David with this. Maybe God has not blessed you yet because God, I don't know if he can trust you with the result of what you're praying for. 
It's because you asked for it, and God can do it. I mean, God can trust you with it. Saul eventually dies off at the end of chapter of, of 1 Samuel, and now David becomes king first of Judah. Seven and a half years, he's leading the people faithfully. And all of a sudden now, in chapter number 5 of 2 Samuel, David now becomes king of all of Israel. He's now the king, having served Saul. But Saul is not just the king. Saul is the father of David's best friend, Jonathan. Saul's not only the king and his best friend's dad, Saul's also David's father-in-law. What do you do when your father-in-law can't stand you? But God is still requiring you to serve while he's trying to kill you. It's hard to sit under the one trying to attack you and God say, be faithful. <laughs> David served Saul because David served God. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's easy to give God what's due unto God when you keep God preeminent in your life. The challenge comes in when you're trying to make everybody else like you. God called, not the people. And man cannot quench what God has called. Help me today, oh God. They don't have to like you. They don't have to support you. But they cannot demote what God has elevated. On your job tomorrow, there's some co-workers who cannot stand you. Let them talk. They cannot demote what God has elevated. They ain't got to say your name. They ain't got to invite you to lunch. They ain't got to speak well of you. But they cannot kill what God has called. David is now king of all of Israel. I got to hurry to get there. The king of all of Israel. Chapter number 5, Second Samuel, he's now king of all of Israel. He has served faithfully. God has now put him in a place now where he could be king of all the people. And now David says it's now time to bring God's presence, the ark of God, back to its prominent place. It's important to know, based on 1 Samuel, that the ark had been taken by the Philistines and had been loosely handled by the Philistines. And so now David said, now that I'm on the throne, we're going to bring God's presence back to God's proper place. And so in chapter number six, our text this morning, David gets 30,000 men to go now with him as he goes to bring this ark back to where it's supposed to be. Herein lies the problem. David and his men are bringing the ark back, and while they're celebrating giving God praise, they're carelessly handling God's presence. Because they are carrying God's presence as the enemy did, not as God required. Just because your neighbor is loud when they praise don't mean that God is pleased with their praise. You got to be careful not to try to repeat somebody else's praise. Because some people are praising off the residue, but the glory is gone. But when you praise, you got to make sure that you're praising vertically, not horizontally. If God is not pleased with your praise, sit yourself down and give God what's due unto God. They don't know how you praise with tears in your eyes. They don't know how you praise in dark places. They don't know how you praise with a broken heart. They don't know how you praise after being backstabbed. They have no idea. They'll tell you ought to sit down. But if they ain't been through what you've been through, they can't quiet how you praise. The Bible says they bring the presence back. They're doing it carelessly on a cart. And all of a sudden now, as they get to a certain place, the calf that's being used to carry the presence stumbles. As it stumbles, Uzzah reaches his hands out innocently to restable the presence, and God gets upset. Because you're using a tainted praise and tainted hands to a holy God. And God strikes Uzzah, and he falls dead. And now, all of a sudden, the praise party stops. David gets mad at God. The people are in awe, and Uzzah is dead. David is mad. We so said, I'm not moving any further from here. I'm, I'm not talking to the president anymore. They leave it in, in, in Obed Edom's house because David's mad at God. But David never admits that the reason why Uzzah is dead because my praise was tainted. Is it possible that you're more impressed by your praise than God is? Is it possible that the saints know how you act in church? They don't know your story. Because. Most people don't praise while they're going through. Or they praise when they come out. But, but real praise is when you have to give God praise while you're in it. Not just when you come out of it. It's hard to praise and pastor God's people. Y'all make it so hard to praise. Sometimes when you're doing like this, 
It ain't praising God. It's got you better do something. As Moses said, um, these are your people. You better get them. I ain't been saying that long. See, see, this was a lot of stuff. David, David is mad at God because others dead. But David never acknowledges that that good praise does not replace bad leadership. David, you knew better. As a result of you not doing better, somebody lost their life. It's not God's fault. God will not let you bring tainted into his presence. The only thing that God lets come into his presence that's dirty is us people. Yeah, you got it, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be- because, because of Jesus, dirty you and dirty you can come in God's presence. Because of Jesus. You can't come by yourself, but because you bring Jesus with you. God will deal with you as he sees his son. And that's why when you praise, not if, but when you praise, you got to give God the praise you know God is due. We remember how good God has been. You don't need no musician. You don't need no drummer. You don't need no praise team. If your memory is right, you remember the last time I went through something. None of y'all were there, but God remained faithful to God's word. Have you ever been there? You in your car ride and get to a red light? And you get a flashback. The light has changed. They're blowing a horn at you. You done got caught up because you recall how good God has been in your life. You recall not having food in the refrigerator, no food in the pantry, no money in the bank, but you kept on eating. You remember losing your job, but your bills stayed paid. You remember kids eat back to school clothes. You ain't got the money, but somebody favored you. You remember when you slept last night, he kept watch over you. Your praise ought to come out of you. Woo! Thank you, Holy Ghost. I tell the people at our church, your mouth ought to be speaking what your heart is leaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's praise on the inside, it's going to come out on the outside. Because what's in will come out. Here is the problem, Minister Howard. Maybe there's no praise on the inside. Because praise is contagious. If they praise in good, it ought to catch fire around you. Um, the presence of God is angry. Us is dead. Dave is mad. The presence stayed behind. For three months, Obed-Edom, Deacon Harden, gets blessed. David gets word, amen. Obed-Edom, his mind is being blown by God. You better go back and get that presence. <laughs> David goes back and get that presence. And this time, though, they transport the glory the right way. The right way is to use rings and transport it properly. Not only on that, though, as you're doing that, you owe God a sacrifice while you're doing it. See, the Philistines were the ones who created carrying the ark on a cart because they were not God worshipers. They could care less about God's presence. But when you are a child of God, you ought to be careful how you handle the things of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me give this to you. Um, um, when when when, when the preacher is praising, and, and not, not when the people, but when the preacher is praising, the Lord showed me in the text a few things that I want to give to you, and I want to head back home um, to my part of the country. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The first thing I want you to see from the text when the preacher prays, number one, is that the preacher is praising because God is forgiving. Um, um, you don't always know why the preacher is praising, but the preacher realizes that I'm standing where I'm standing because God has been forgiving toward me. Um, truth be told, we don't qualify to be up here on our own accord. But, but the Lord is using us for his glory. The Bible says in verses 6 through 7 that, 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 that us is dead because of the mishandling of how they carry God. Now, now, David has to acknowledge that I'm the reason why this has happened because I'm giving God real praise, but I'm carrying him wrong. You've got to be careful how you carry the presence of God. 
You got to be careful where you go with God's presence. You got to be careful how you speak in God's presence. You got to be careful what you do, say, act, and respond with God's presence. David realizes that God is forgiving. Every preacher of the gospel needs to understand there's nothing about you that's wonderful. You, without the oil, is just you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not the best singer. <laughs> Trying to find the joke. <laughs> not the best singer, but, but even, thank you, mama. Even bad singers can sound good with some oil. Thank you, Teresa, for the support. I don't know if it was genuine or not, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I still ain't about to sing. But anyway, hear me, ladies and gentlemen. When you remember where you were, you remember how God has done what God has done in your life. When you remember the ways you had. Brothers and sisters, I get to old Jerusalem by using L and J as my marker. I'm using the club to get to the church. But here's what's great. God has been so good to some of y'all you don't stop no more at the club. You come right to church. There was a time when you would slow your way in to church, but go by there first. There was a time you came to church with a stamp on your hand. But God has been so forgiving, you remember where you were and where you are now. So when you praise, you praise recalling how good God's been. Preacher praise is because God is forgiving. Um, um, he's forgiving because he knows the thoughts I think towards you. Yeah. That's why the pastor stay in his office so much. He's praying, Lord, help my tongue. When the preacher praises, he's praising because... God is forgiving. If I may share and be personal here, I have a grave concern about the local church um, that we were coming more impressed by buildings and parking lots, not about the glory. Ladies and gentlemen, what is church if the presence isn't there? COVID ought to prove to us the importance of the presence. The second, second thing the text shows me um, in, in verses, verses 8 through 12, the second reason why the preacher praises, he praises because he praises despite the pain of loss. Pastor Rogers, they'll never know um, the agony and the mental toil you take when you lose members, whether it's through death or them just leaving. They never know how we carry the, the, the sanctuary and the congregation home with us. They'll never know how we labor and pray for them even when they ain't talking to us. They'll never know how we want the best for them. They don't even want it for themselves. They'll never know the tears and the agony. David, David is mad at God. David's also hurt about losing Uzzah. And, and, and David is now going to have to gather himself in the face of loss because this whole thing was supposed to be a praise party, and now we're at a funeral. I didn't plan for the funeral. I came for the praise. And now I'm having to learn how to praise God in the face of loss. It's hard to praise when your heart is broken. It's hard to praise when the people don't speak well of you. It's hard to praise when they, when they talk bad about you. But you gotta, you got to bury their loved one. It's, it's amazing how you still have to give God what's due unto God with tears in your eyes. There's a book out 
called the wounded healer. Talking about how you're having to preach and pastor people while you need to be healed. Because here's the fact of the matter. Um, if the preacher don't call the parishioners when they're going through, the parishioners get mad at the preacher. When the preacher goes through something, who's calling the preacher? Do you ever ask yourself, what is my pastor having to preach through to get to me? Sometimes the tears aren't tears of praise. They're tears of brokenness. Because prior to coming out, you got a phone call or a text. Or you recognize and realize the person who was here two months ago is not here anymore. It, it's hard when, when, you, when you learn that members left, but they didn't tell you about it. It's hard to realize that your member is on your role and somebody else's role. And while you're praying for their breakthrough, they've left you. You're having to still give God praise while you're wounded. you got to feed the people from a word you're trying to eat on yourself. David is mad at God because Uzzah is dead. But David, understand this now, even though he's dead, God is still deserving of the praise. John P. Key says this, there are two times you ought to praise God. When you feel like it, and when you don't. God is always deserving of the praise. The question is, will you give it to him? David says, I'm not carrying this ark any further. And don't get mad at David. We do it too. You get mad at God, you say, I ain't praying no more. I ain't reading my Bible. I'm going to keep my money to myself. You holding on to your money? Selfishly. If you ever look at the offering sometimes, some of those bills be so tightly put in. Loose it. Let it go. The preacher is praising because God is forgiving. I got to press on. He's praising because he's praising despite the, the, the pain of loss. And him, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to praise while you're going through pain. It's hard to praise when you're going through pain. It's hard to pay, praise when you wonder, does anybody see my pain? The people feel entitled to be mad at the pulpit. But the pulpit can't be mad at the people. Imagine how the child of the preacher feels when the people are mad at the preacher, but that's the child's daddy. And the people forget, I ain't always been a preacher. There's sometimes, Marco, I remind myself. Let's press on. You praise because God is forgiving. You pray despite the pain of loss. But number three, Pastor Rogers, the preacher praises even through either the naysayers or judging. David, verses 16 through 20, David comes home to bless his family, only to have his wife judge him and chastise him. Now, Michal, you have to understand who she is. Michal is the daughter of of the previous king. She is the daughter of King Saul. So she's been reared and raised in the palace. She knows how to be dignified. And what David is giving unto God is not dignified. It's not distinguished. It's not the king's behavior. So she's looking out of her window through the lens of anger and frustration at this man. You're embarrassing yourself. You are the king. She thought to realize before David became king, he was a worshiper. And David tried to tell her, I'm a king not because I've done great things. Worship got me here. Before I was a pastor, I was a praiser. She's judging him, questioning his motives. Now David has blessed the people, got to come home and deal with this. 
What do you do, Pastor Rogers, when you're having to preach to people who are naysayers? Questioning if you really do hear from God. But because you change one thing. I know us. Yeah. B -b -b because you change one thing because there are no more pews. We all go into hell. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. There are no pews in heaven. There's a choir there, though. My cow begins to, we talk about David is leaping and dancing. Remember now, the first time David was dancing and praising God, God wasn't satisfied. David has now gotten himself right. And so now this time when David is praising, he's giving everything he has in himself. But he's dancing and praising while wearing his priestly garment. <laughs> David is praising so good, he begins to unrobe himself. Because sometimes our garments block our praise. You've got to be careful not to get the title and lose the praise. So David is saying, if the garment is a problem, I'll leave the garment to keep on praising. And she gets mad because for her, the garment is more important than the praise. Be careful of people who don't respect your praise, but they want your title. He has to praise in the face of naysayers who are judging. Because you remember, preacher, I'm here because he's there. And when they leave, he remains. Let me press to my ending. You got to praise because God is forgiving. Praise despite the pain of loss. You got to praise even when the naysayers are judging. But lastly, when David responds to Michal in 20 and 21 and tells her, here's why I praise. The first reason, and I'm done. You praise because God is good. Yeah. And here is the problem. We say it so much, it doesn't have the same zeal. But David says to her, God chose me over your daddy and his family. Shame on me to be chosen and not give him praise. See, see, Tony Evans says, he says that Michael looked at his praising through a earthly perspective. But David did it through a heavenly perspective. Because she's more worried about what they going to say. He's more concerned with, is he pleased with it? And if your praise doesn't please vertigo, you got a problem here anyway. David says to her, I'm only here because God put me here. Um, the story is told, I got it, here we go. story is told of a grandmother who was left raising her grandson. Her grandson. The grandson was a senior in high school, and he was very popular, really good student. The problem is he had a really bad stutter. And the kids would pick on him because he stuttered really bad. He came home day after day from school crying because the kids had picked on him because he stuttered. Popular, good grades, but he stuttered. He came home and said, G -g 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 Grandma, they, they did it again. Grandma said, baby, God is good. He's going to use you mightily. You go to school, you come back. Grandma, they, they did it again. She would console him and say, baby, God is good. He's going to use you mightily. The school year will progress on, get close to graduation, and word gets out that he is going to be able to give a speech at graduation because he is at the top of the class. All of a sudden now, some of the kids' parents begin to protest because they don't want to hear him at the graduation party, at the graduation ceremony, giving the speech. Word gets back to him. He goes home. This time when he gets, gets home, close to home, grandma sees him from the window. The way he's walking, she knows it was a really bad day. She goes out there on the porch and says, baby, what's wrong? Your grandma, 
I'm hurting real bad. And she began to tell grandma about giving the chance to give the speech. And grandma, I don't want to do this. They're going to talk about me. She said, baby, God is good. He's going to use you mightily. He, he, he said, grandma, they're going to talk bad about me. Grandma said, baby, hear me. God is good. He's going to use you mightily. That night, he couldn't eat, Deacon Harden. That night, he went to bed early, but he was restless because he was worried about embarrassing himself tomorrow. Tomorrow came. Yeah. Grandma gets him up. She's excited because he's graduating. But he's not excited because all he's thinking about is the graduation ceremony and embarrassing himself. At the breakfast table, food is there. He's not hungry. Grandma is trying to comfort him and console him because grandma is telling him God is good. He's going to use you mightily. He gets to school. Gets there early. They get lined up. Hours go by. He comes out for graduation. He's on the stage. Time comes for the program. He has to now give the graduation speech. He gets there behind the lectern. It's packed in the auditorium. People are looking at him, and he can see as he's standing there, the people looking at him, some in mockery, some in anger. But to the very back, he sees his grandma. Grandma has put together a sign. Sign is held up, and it says, baby, God is good. He's going to use you mightily. The young man stands behind the lectern. People are staring at him. Classmates are before him. Family's all around. But straight ahead, his grandmother told him this sign. He gets there. He looks around. People have their heads down. They don't want to hear this. He puts his head down. He breathes real loud, holds his head up. He says, I have six words to say to you. Put his head back down. In himself, he talks to God and says, Lord, help me say these six words. Holds his head up. He says, my fellow classmates, God is good. <laughs> the auditorium is quiet because for the first time, he says six words with no stutter. Auditorium is in shock because it wasn't a long speech. But what he said was impactful. They don't know how to respond. It's quiet. He can you take your seat. And he hears a voice in the back of the auditorium say, he sure is. And as grandma says what she says, and as her grandson is sitting in his seat, he jumps back up because he got a witness in the back of the auditorium that realized that for the whole year, I've been telling you, God is going to use you. And now, those who doubted, and those who are naysayers, and those who laugh in your face, find themselves having to hear you say, God is good. Pastor Rogers, when you want to quit, praise. When you're tired, praise. When you're broken, praise. When you want to quit, praise. If they don't show up, praise. If they do show up, praise. If your body is tired, praise. If you feel like going into town, keep on praising. If your family is hurting, praise. If your body is hurting, praise. Here is why. You praise, God gets the glory. God gets the glory for your good. You praise, God gets the glory. God gets the glory for your good. You praise. God gets the glory. God gets the glory for your good. You pray. God gets the glory. God gets the glory for your good. If you pray. Thank you, Lord. They didn't realize, Tasha, is that while they laughed at his stutter, God can use a stuttering boy to bless the atmosphere. You do realize that all of you in here, you got something about you that's disqualifying. But God will take the imperfection and use it for his glory. When the preacher praises, let him praise by himself. Because if you've been through what I've been through, I got to go. I got to go. I got to give it to you. 
I said, fam, you, my freshman year, and, and um, um, I had a roommate, Rashad Webb. Rashad came from Groveland, Florida. Rashad came from money. I didn't. I got the fam you a little bit earlier than Rashad got there. I was in my dorm room. Um, I didn't have no linen. I didn't have no comforter because I thought they were going to provide all that when I got the fam you. I lived in Patty for 311A. I get to my dorm room. It's a small little room. I got to share it with somebody else. I get there on a Saturday, which I don't get there to that Tuesday. So for these days, I'm there by myself with one little piece of sheet on this, con- on this, on this um, be- bunk bed. I have nothing else in the room. I'm, I'm away from home. I'm in this room by myself. Rashad showed up on that Tuesday with his grandmother, his grandfather, and his daddy. Um, they come into the room. He got all this luggage. His grandmother said, baby, how long you been here? I said, I've been here since Saturday. She said, where your stuff at? I said, that's all I got. Five suitcases, $200 in cash. So that's all I got. I came from across the country, from Los Angeles. That's all I got. And she said, baby, she said, you ain't able to make it with nothing. She said, Rashad, put them bags down. Let's take this boy to the Walmart. I don't know this lady. She don't know me. But she said these words, you're going to be my grandson's roommate. I'm going to bless you. I got blessed with my grandson. <laughs> Listen to me. Y'all clapped at the wrong part. Here's the best part about it. I got blessed because of proximity. <laughs> Just maybe if you praise with the preacher, I gotta do for you what he does for the preacher. Because if the preacher praises, the people ought to praise. When you praise and you see your neighbor gets blessed, you ought to know that means that God is hovering somewhere around here. Therefore, I want to get in position because if God is blessing the preacher, that means that God is somewhere around the preacher. So my job is to get close enough to the preacher that I can get the overflow of the preacher. I know y'all from the country. Let me give you one. My grandmother loved to drink coffee. My church has heard this before. Drink coffee in her mug. She always put her coffee up to the top of her mug. But she would always put a plate up under the mug. I don't drink coffee. I didn't appreciate it. Grandma would drink her coffee slow and loud. And it bothered me. One day I watched my grandmother drink this coffee, finish that coffee. She put that mug to the side. She grabbed that salsa. And brother, she put her head back, opened her mouth, and she began to pour from the salsa into her mouth. Hear me, y'all. I'm disturbed by what's going on. I said, Grandma, what are you doing? That's nasty. Say, it ain't nasty. It's overflow. Because the saucer is holding what was in the mug. If the mug was good, the overflow is good. And I'm trying to tell you, if he is the mug, let me do the overflow. There are some seasons you're going to be the mug. There are some seasons you are the overflow. But guess what? If the mug is good, so is the overflow. And I'm so glad that God is so good that God will bless me with overflow.
bro. When you get weary, praise and preach. When you wonder if you're making a difference, praise and preach. When you feel like giving up, praise and preach. Because what God will show you is glimpses of people whose lives have been changed from your praising and your preaching. The crowd may not get it, but there is a young man in Havana, Florida, that God is using because he knows how to praise and knows how to preach. For 13 years, it's been the remedy. And now your church looks like you in the praising. They don't have to understand the tears you've shed, the frustrations you've had. They don't have to understand the times you wonder if it's worth it. I mean, never, never appreciate it. But keep on praising and keep on preaching. Because some of your best sermons came from your painful places. Preach. Praise. Come on, y'all. Preach. Praise. Preach. Praise. Preach. Praise. Preach. Praise. Preach. Praise. Come on, y'all. Preach. Praise. Preach. Praise. Preach. Praise. And guess what? When you get tired of preaching, just praise. Because praise is more important than the preaching anyway. They ain't going to sing it, but I want to say it. The old saints would say, down through the years. The Lord's been good. OJ, for 13 years, you ought to be singing down through the years. The Lord's been good to us. You've been through iterations of pastors. You fall in love with them, then they leave. Whatever reason they left, that's not my assignment. But God loves you so much that God said the one I have for you is amongst you. Who's going to love you more than your own? The weight of the assignment is great, but his love for you is greater. Even when you don't come to Bible study, he shows up. When you don't come consistently on Sunday mornings, he shows up. When the faithful become few, he shows up. When it's so empty, you got an echo in the sanctuary, he still shows up. When you're mad at him, he still shows up. He said to bury your loved ones and marry your loved ones. He showed up. But Paul's long enough to think what would happen if he didn't show up. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you will. you have yourself in right standing with the Lord. You're here today. Do you know him for yourself? Do you know him for yourself? If your name was called, are you certain that heaven is your final place? If you're not, this morning, I want to extend my hand to you to give your life to Jesus Christ. At our church, it's our custom for leaders to be in the aisle way to help escort you down. Since we're rendering service to you, we have leaders in the aisle way who will walk with you and pray with you. If that's you and you're here and you're saying, I don't know him for myself, 
Won't you come now? Won't you come now? Won't you come now? Give your life to Jesus. Maybe you're here and you are a child of God, but you walked away from the fellowship. Walked away from church because of those heathens and those hypocrites. But you realize I've gotten off course. And I need to get myself back in line with the Lord's will for my life. And today I want to recommit myself back to the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you, if that's you, won't you come now? Today is your day to give your life back to Jesus, to live for him again. He loves you right where you are. If that's you, will you come? Maybe you're here, you've been praying for a local church family, and you've heard God say, oh, Jerusalem is where I want you to be, to grow in the things of God. If that's you, won't you come now? And join your heart with this local church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift that up, lift that up, lift that up. Thank you, Lord. ready to sanctuary now for offering. Ask the BBC ushers if you wouldn't mind getting on your post. I want to respect the custom of the house. For those who plan on giving electronically, the screen lets you know that you can give three ways. You can give in person this morning as you heard by the ushers, you can give through Givelify. We know about Givelify. You can Givelify, or you can mail it in, mail it in. The field box on the screen. However you're going to give, be cheerful. But I'm also going to ask if you will join me in this to your offering. I want us to bless the man of God and his family. We're going to do it electronically. Or we can give it monetarily. We brought a check from the church, from our church to your church. But I'm going to give personally to the man of God. I know what it means to have to lead God's people. So I want to do the same thing. Amen. Amen. So if you're giving this morning, if you're giving this morning, the ushers come to serve you. It really worked out behind the scenes how the money gonna work. Don't worry about how it's gonna work out. It's been figured out. Just give your offering, whether online, in the basket, or through the mail. If you're paying your tithe today, make sure you pay your tithe to your right church. Amen. 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 Ushers, we in your hands this morning. For those who are giving on Givelify, you look for Old Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church on Givelify.
God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. With your name on it. With your name on it. With your name on it, with your name on it. You can have it, reach up and grab it. You can have it, reach up and grab it. You can have it, reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it, reach up and grab it. God's got a blessing. 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 With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. With your name on it. to govern God. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for all of the blessings that you stored upon us. God, we ask that this offering be used to the upbuilding of your kingdom and to serve your people. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're not going to put it in the hands of the anniversary committee. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I know. I hope you guys were full this morning. Spiritually fed, praise God. I know I am, praise God. So as I stand, I stand so we can, go ahead, we can present to our pastor and first family love offerings this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So for any auxiliary or ministry who would like to present a love offering to the pastor, please come forth. Well, on behalf of the ministerial staff, we present Pastor Rogers and First Family love offering. We love you, Pastor Rogers, Lady Rogers, Trenton and Akela, and there's nothing you can do about it. Good morning, Pastor and First Family. I stand on behalf of the youth ministry. Our youth leaders have not been as active as we wanted to be this year, but God laid on my heart the word for you this morning is heart. He has allowed us to see over 13 years how your heart has grown. It is the evidence. 
that we need to see in knowing that you have a heart for your people. Your heart allows you to love us, even though sometimes you may be mad at us at the things we do, but it allows you to love us. It allows you to admit when you're wrong and ask for forgiveness. It allows you to love even though we may not give you the love that you desire for us to give you. But you choose to love us. You choose to teach us. You choose to pour into us because God has given you that assignment. And for that, this morning, we tell you thank you. First lady, God has laid on you to be a nurturing spirit because of your heart. And as you pour out your nurturing to us, he will pour back into you the nurturing that you have given. So know that it is an endless flow. He will always restore you of the nurturing that you need to pour out to God's people. To Kayla, you have outgrown the youth ministry. But now you set the example for the youth that are falling behind you. And with your heart, we pray that you continue to grow and nurture the youth that are behind you. Trenton, you are still in the youth ministry. To be that leading example and allow God to lead you the way he has placed on you to lead. But choose each of you to use the spiritual gifts that he has given you. Treasure them because there is nothing greater. And he loves you with all his heart. And the youth ministry says thank you. I am proud of y'all. If nobody else is proud of y'all, I am proud of you. I thank y'all. I thank y'all for what all y'all have done for me, what you're still doing for me. And y'all do things that nobody ever know what y'all do for me, and I appreciate y'all so much. I thank y'all. I thank Kayla and Trenta, my two oldest grandchildren. Kayla is my baby still. Grand other grandchildren are coming. I wonder if he think that one belongs to her. But uh, we just want to say thank you on the, uh, uh, behalf of the usher, ushers ministry. We be here if nobody else be here. We go <laughs> wherever we got to go. The usher going to be there. We support you. We're going to be there right there for you all. Sometimes we get a little tired, but we keep going. <laughs> but we got one usher member we're going to get rid of for a while. Don't let her come back. <laughs> That they got a fist baller. Everybody knew who I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, all ushers, please stand. Good morning, everyone. I'm not a big speaker. So would, um, I'm representing the ministry, the music ministry. Will you please stand? <laughs> On behalf of the music ministry, we present this love offering to the family. Thank you. so very special to us and we love you very much and this is from to lady rogers a passion for women that's from the women of the church and we thank god and we love you and to pastor thank god for you trenton y'all get busy with him <laughs> Good morning. 
God is good all the time. As uh, Deacon Gus would say, well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the journey you brought me. Well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the journey you brought me. Well, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the journey you brought me. Pastor Clarence Jackson preached it's about the rain and we didn't get this the uh, sermon for the Wednesday because the storm came through and then we come in when the preacher praises and we know that our pastor praises because he pushes us all the time he always say well nine o'clock we gonna have prayer service or something and sometimes I, I will come and then I stop but pastor he continued to come and uh, he, he, all the stuff that he wants us to do Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. And so I, I want to say this, Pastor. You broke me from walking. <laughs> Pastor McGee, he broke me from walking. I thought I could walk. <laughs> Pastor, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we were walking, we were walking together. We started out walking for exercising. We were doing that on Wednesday for our uh, fitness. And Pastor walked so fast and he don't realize it. And then I'm trying to keep up with him. I thought I, I thought I can walk. I can walk, but I can't walk as fast as Pastor walk. And by the time we got back to the church, I said I ain't walking no more. <laughs> but. Uh, in, uh, from from the from the deacons uh, to the first family to uh, first lady to our pastor, thirteen years that's a long time to be in a place to govern people to uh, uh, preach to pe people to pray for people the whole shebang everything and uh, I'm so I'm so glad to be under you and. Uh, uh, I wrote it out to you. <laughs> but anyway, and uh, I see uh, Trenton and uh, uh, Kayla. And uh, uh, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. I ain't want to take no more of the time, Pastor. I come again on behalf of the church. Will Trenton, Akela, Pastor and First Lady, will you please come up front, please? If y'all know me, these, these are my people. I don't go nowhere without them. So every time you see them, you're going to see me. And if they ain't going, I'm not going. But uh, I'm not here to talk about me, but this is um, tokens of love from the church just for being the example. You don't, you don't ask us to do anything that you're, you yourself won't do first. So that I admire about y'all. So here we go. Three minutes of family prayer for you. Pastor, uh, our pastor is a manly man. And I was stressing because I had to wrap this gift, and I was like, what kind of paper am I gonna use? 
and he don't get offended. So this is like the closest thing that I could find. I hope you're not offended. <laughs> Kayla from the church. And this is to the church. To God be the glory. So certainly, certainly we thank God for today. Uh, we thank God for uh, this moment. We thank God for what he has allowed to take place here at Old Jerusalem. Derek, you said something that many people who are around me know. I love the pulpit. But at the same time, it's the hardest thing for me. When I preached my first sermon as pastor, that's the day my mom died. Every time I stand up, I, I preach through that. Der Derek will tell you at least two or three times throughout the year. I say, man, take time with your mom. Take time with your dad. Not that he doesn't, but that's my biggest regret. That I was so excited to pastor that I didn't take that time. Family is first. And so while I thank God for the privilege to pastor the greatest people on this side of glory. I, I told those who were here Wednesday, I thank y'all for giving me the space to grow, uh, the, the space to make mistakes, uh, the space to see what God will do through who he calls. And so I thank y'all for that. I want to say to my children, thank you. Church, y'all may not know, but children make the greatest sacrifice because they have to share us with so many other people. And sometimes we get pulled away from the things that they desire from us, but my kids never complain. So I thank God that they could be anywhere. My daughter serves on the praise team. She works with uh, the youth. She does so much. She's in school. She's working. Uh, and I thank God because she could be doing so many other things. Uh, but I don't have to worry about where she is. Amen. So I thank God. I thank God for Kayla. I thank God for my twin, my me. <laughs> Everything about this young man is me. I thank God for my son. I thank God for him. Uh, he, he does, and I talk about it all the time, he does, he, he works with the media team, and so he came in to tell me something, and he had to say, Dad, let me just say it, because I was ready to respond before he could tell me that he had already handled it and what he, what he had done. And so I thank God for him, because he's only 15. He could be doing any and everything, but he's a, he's a, he's a straight-A student. Uh, he, he plays football. He's... He's in Distinguished Young Gentleman. He just got selected to be the captain of their step team this year. Amen. So I, I thank God. I thank God for him. But to the apple of my eye. To the one that causes my heart to skip a beat every time I see her. To the one I met under the Golden Arches of McDonald's on Tennessee Street in 1994. To the one that I want to see when I get up in the morning, to the last thing I see before I close my eyes. I thank God for this sexy, beautiful, lovely woman of God who prays for me, who covers me, who keeps me in check, who makes me laugh. I want you to know I love you. And this has been a great ride. 
We're getting ready to celebrate 23 years of marriage. This has been a great, great ride. And I wouldn't be in church had you not told me, if you want to be with me, you got to go where I go. And that was the house of God. Amen. So I thank God. I thank God for her. And I thank God for my mother in love. She's in the back working. Uh, when you talked about that grandmother, uh, I was a depressed senior in college. Had no money, had no food. And she said, Tell that boy to come get food out of my freezer, whatever he wants. I will not let him starve. And I love her. So whatever she asks me for, whatever she needs me to do, uh, it gets done. And so I want her to know that I love her. And uh, thank y'all. That If I can't say nothing else, thank y'all. And to deep, thank you. He has stood. I've either lost deacons to death or I had them to leave me. He's my only deacon. Thank you, Dean. I ain't always been perfect. But even in my immaturity as a preacher, thank you. First, I want to give honor to God. Today and this week has been fantastic, spectacular. Um, I wasn't able to make it on. Wednesday night, but I heard that it was a great time because I am in school. I picked up another another task, right? Um, like I have not enough to do, but I am in school pursuing uh, my master's in social work. <laughs> and so that that being said, y'all, we gonna need y'all to kind of pick up because I ain't gonna be able all the time. I'm gonna be in my studies. But um, I just want to tell Old Jerusalem, we love you all. Pastor um, McGee shared a lot in his sermons today that hit home. And one of the things that um, he um, said is about preaching through your pain or praising through your pain. Um, and I know that this man of God, he, he does that often, often. And here in Old Jerusalem, I've been here since I, I was a baby. So I, I grew up in this ministry. And um, one of the things um, that is hard for me as well is to see when we suffer loss, right? And um, when Derek was talking this morning and uh, Jan is not here, but she's online. She can attest to it. And Lynette and Bell, I keep all of our cards from appreciation, and I tend to go through them right before the appreciation. And so last night I was going through a card, and I found one from Elder Darsaw, and she had wrote out my name, um, Teresha, and she spelled. She she told me what what the T stand for, the A stand for, and the R, and it just blessed my soul because I was like, even though we've lost members to death or leaving, God has a way of sending those subtle reminders to say how what we're doing is not in vain. It took, you know, we're blessing people. And I just want to share with my husband is just continue to do what you do. I'm right here beside you. I'm the I'm your armor bearer. I'm your prayer warrior. Listen, I'm the catch all. I'm the behind the scenes, in front of the scene, wherever you want me to be. 
I'm right here beside you. And I just want to thank Old Jerusalem. I want to thank Pastor uh, McGee, Lady McGee, Bible Base for showing up on today and just being in the midst with us. God has been good to us. He's been good to our family, our ministry, and I'm just so excited of what he has in store for this next level. So y'all, come on, get on board. We are ready. <laughs> All right. Listen, Bible Base Church, thank you. Thank y'all who are here, those who are watching online. Thank you so much. Bro, you know you're my dude, man. All Bro have lost over a hundred pounds. Um it was fifty pounds? It was like a hundred. <laughs> fifty pounds. So I told him, I said, listen now, listen. Looking like Al Sharpton. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? Big head, little body. Al be tilting over. Don't. But I'm so pr I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him because we all hold each other accountable. And Ro is an awesome, awesome cook. He, he barbecues and things of nature. I don't know how he's around all this food and not give in. But I'm proud of his discipline, his commitment in that regard. OJ. Celebrate your past, but most importantly, celebrate God's goodness to all of you. God bless you. God keep you. Let's stand. Let's go home together. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please forgive me. I want to say to uh, the pastor's aid committee um, that spearheaded our appreciation, how much I appreciate y'all, how much I love y'all. And thank y'all so much for all uh, that you've done. Shout out to Brother Zyman. Uh, I said I wasn't going to say nothing because I don't like losing. Uh, but Brother Zyman whooped my tail yesterday <laughs> bowling. Amen. So shout out to him. Uh, I know you had the rub down in Bengay and all that liniment uh, when you got home last night. But thank God for the fellowship on yesterday. We had a great time. Over 60-something people uh, came together to bowl on yesterday. And so I thank God for that. So we have brunch in the back uh, as soon as this service is over. There's food in the back is what he's trying to tell you. Those don't know what, know what brunch mean. That's food. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, God, thank you for allowing us to jointly come together and worship in your presence. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for allowing him to withstand and now to stand 13 years later. Thank you for Lady Rogers and for the children, oh God. Bless Caleb, bless Trenton. Bless the work that they're doing, oh God. Keep their hearts encouraged. Bless OJ, oh God. Till you do great and mighty things through this ministry for your glory and for their good. Bless now your people. God, be glorified in all that we do. Give us safe travel as we go from here to somewhere else. We give you all glory, all honor, all praise. Now every hand lifted, if you will. Let's go old school. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Hey, y'all, don't just be blessed. God bless you. Have a great Sunday.